You're going to see a demonstration of rough grinding now. And uh, here, I'm going to show you how to, I grind with the uh, number 10 abrasive. And this is really not meant to be like a real educational video exactly. Just showing a few finer points of what I do and uh, sort of how it looks and that when I do it. I've got earplugs in now. I'm just making sure they're well in there before I start. There's a very, very loud noise. It's about the equivalent of standing right over top of a lawnmower while it's running. Uh, <clears throat> right now, I'm kind of getting a little bit low on this abrasive. I'm going to try and make it go a little bit further by putting a thinner layer on. So, I'm just going to use a, a to be spreading the abrasive over here. It, you have to be careful because it flies all over the place after it lands, so it's a little tricky to get it on. Usually, uh, when it goes on, when I'm working, the tool is wet. I haven't got it wet yet. I probably should have put some water on it before I put this on. But, uh, oh. I'm actually more worried about making the video at the moment than I am about grinding it. So. Uh, there. That should be enough for a start. I'm going to try and make a thinner layer. That will give more pressure on each grain. And if there's not as many of them, it might actually grind a little faster, hopefully. So. Just leave this open. Now, I have to add a little water to the sponge. I don't have the same pad as I used to clean it off with. You might not be able to see me as I go out of the frame. I got the camera aimed at a tripod just so you can see the actual grinding action. But all I'm doing now is getting the sponge wet and putting a little bit of this water on the sponge, just distributing it around the mirror. It's, it's hard to know. No one's ever really shown me how to do this. I just read it in books and learned how it myself, my own kind of. So I'm not really all that familiar with exactly how much water you should use and how much abrasive. So. This is probably not quite enough abrasive. I may just add a little bit before I start. I'll see. So. But it's better to have a little too much water, I think, just to make sure it doesn't like seize up during the grinding process. You don't want that to happen. That's really bad news. So. I'll take you through a couple of what they call wets, that is, different charges of abrasive. Like, this video is not meant to be, like I say, not exactly what you'd call a work of art. It's just meant to be sort of a demonstration of how it works with a few of the finer points covered. Let's add just a little bit more. There. Now, here comes the fun part. This is the part that always makes me nervous. This blank weighs 42 pounds, so it's probably a little bit less than that because I've grown a small amount of glass out of it, but you can tell it's a really heavy, mean piece of glass. So I turn it over here. This is a very massive table. Oh. And very, very gently set it on top of the tool. And I'm doing a lot of the grinding right near the edge of the tool. Because when I'm doing that, I'm actually hollowing out the center of the mirror a little bit faster. It's written up in Tex Rule's book, more or less the basic stroke you'll be doing. Distributing the abrasive. Out. So here it goes. This is so hard to push back and forth that I kind of have my hands, usually you have your hands in this position. But today, I, with this, I kind of have to distribute them just so they'll have work and get my fingers in such a position. I got a terrible blister the first time I did that. So I got to hook my fingers around so that I don't have that happen again. I try and push down fairly hard while I'm doing it, which is very hard in the arms. So you're usually sore for a few days after. <laughs> To 
about somewhere between eight and twelve, eight and twelve back and forth strokes with each position. I've rotated myself this way relative to the tool, and then I rotate the mirror blank relative to the tool like that. Again, so that there everything is in a different orientation. you're going to hear the, the sound soften very quickly. So you don't hear that harsh grinding sound. It disappears into a soft sort of murmur. At that point, the abrasive is really not much use anymore because it's worn down into a much smaller grain size. And so it doesn't cut the glass effectively, and you might as well replace it with a new dose. You're just wasting your time if you prolong the wet. And you run the risk of the, the tool and the mirror sticking together when you do that, too, which is not a good thing. <laughs> hear that smooth sound. Now what I do is I always try and start at a new position too, like not the same old spot. It was around here that I started, so I try and memorize relative to some object in the room where I start each charge of abrasive so that the law of averages will have the best chance to take place. Like I'll be starting a new position and everything. I decenter, I rather than lift this heavy thing off every time with this coarse abrasive, I just decenter it about three quarters of the way out so that there's no danger of it falling off. But there's still most of the abrasive, the old spent abrasive, which we call like a, think of as mud, is all exposed. And I can just take a damp sponge and sponge it off, and then rinse the sponge off. You saw me forming the bevel in the first part of the video. The bevel is all formed. Now, while it's unlike that state, I just add a little bit more abrasive and water to this side. You can see that I'm not adding very much. I'm trying to prolong it, make it cut a little faster by having the more, more pounds per square inch, you might say, on each abrasive grade, which will happen if you have fewer of them. So there we are. Someone who knows what, really well, knows what they're doing and watches this will probably recognize that I could be doing it a bit more efficiently, but this is the best I know how to do. Now, at this stage, I move this over to the other side. These tend to roll off the edge, so I kind of lift it up a little bit at that point, and that seems to prevent all this fresh abrasive from going right over the edge of the tool while I move it over. You can actually see it right through the back of the mirror. There, that's far enough. I don't want it to fall off the edge of the tool. You just have to clean like 80 or 90 percent of the old uh, muddy residue left from the abrasive that's been ground down. Add a fresh bunch over here so that they'll be more or less evenly distributed. Now at this stage, all we're trying to do is hollow out the curve very rapidly and yet still achieve a reasonable amount of accurate spherical curvature. What I'm going to do eventually is grind with one-third strokes for quite a while, several hours at least, with Hugh McLean's abrasive like I explained. And that will hopefully bring this both curves back to a very accurate sphere. All the way through rough, fine grinding, I'll be using one-third strokes. But right now, I'm just trying to hollow the thing out very quickly, which you can use erratic strokes to do. So the rough grinding has reached almost the edge of the primary mirror now. It has on one side, and it's reached almost the edge of the primary mirror on the other side. So I'm just adding a small amount here like this. There, it doesn't have to be much. It doesn't have to be extremely evenly distributed either. During the fine grinding process, I'm going to take much more pains 
to distribute the abrasive very evenly as best I can over the whole surface area of the tool before I start each charge of fine grinding abrasive. And that way I'll, I won't be having any little holes cut out of the primary mirror by having too much abrasive in one spot. This whole process depends on the law of averages primarily and a few minor precautions like not letting the abrasive charge wear out too much and uh, not letting the abrasive charge wear out too much and not letting the uh, uh, make sure you sponge it all off you know like between each grade and make sure it's evenly dis distributed during the uh, refining process of fine grinding. Now I think I believe I started the first one over here. I'll, I'll memorize them more carefully. I've got to rotate over approximately here to start this one. Okay, I'm going to push down fairly hard, especially at the first where the cutting action is at its best. I'm going to push down hard, as hard as I can during the first uh, couple of times. and. Uh, uh, just to make sure I get as much cutting action as possible. This is recommended in Textrol's book, How to Make a Telescope, during the rough grinding. grinding is much easier than this, by the way, because you don't have to press down on the fine grinding. You just have to move it back and forth. And you don't have to move it with as large a stroke. So it's a very easy process compared to this rough grinding. Polishing is hard, too. See, each charge of abrasive doesn't really last very long. So, I have to remember I started from about this side. So, next side time I'll start, it'll be over toward the camera someplace. There we go. Subconsciously, I'm keeping my fingers on this side of the mirror because I'm always a little afraid it'll fall off the edge. You know, there's just that fear when it's stuck way out like that sort of a it probably won't but you never know <laughs> so one tends to be cautious much easier to be now than when I started this. Maybe my muscles are getting more adapted to it. It doesn't seem to be as stressful or as much, have as much difficulty connected with it as when I started grinding a few weeks ago. It's a little too far for my comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> 